Hello, good day, and welcome back to NAT. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a NAT cluster. I'll explain why you would want a NAT cluster. Of course, since there are a number of ways that you can configure a NAT cluster for production, we're not going to be talking about how to create NAT cluster for production use, but just to show you the benefit, and then of course, um, show you how you can do it um, for your simple testing and so on. So let's jump in. So let's say I have a NAT server, right? So I just simply start up, run the command NAT server with some configuration file, and that's, I'm gonna call that server one. We know that though it's gonna open a client port, let's say 4222 by default, where you can have client connect. Those clients are gonna be your publisher, subscriber, or you know using object store or whatever. Let's say um, I start up NAT again, so let's call it NAT server two. Now, even on the same machine, you could run multiple instances of NAT. So I have a NAT and NAT server, and of course, clients could connect to that. But these two NAT servers are disconnected, which means that if on the right side, I have a client that's interested in messages that are produced by the client on the left, it's not gonna be able to traverse these two um, NAT servers because they're not connected. And just to run things out, we're gonna say we have an we have a odd number of NAT servers. Not that that's required, but just let's just go with the example. And we have a third NAT server, but we want to do clustering. So why would we want to do clustering? So that messages published on one NAT server, if their clients, you know, on another NAT server that's interested in that message, they can get it. Also, if one of our NAT server were to go down, we want clients to still be able to work. Okay. And in order to do that, the way NAT does it is it. The servers, they talk or they do the uh, clustering on a separate port. So I'm going to call this the cluster port. And by default, this is port 6222 for NAT. But you can make it anything, like everything else, you can change the port, right? And so let's say we want um, NAT server 1 to be participating in clustering. We'll tell, hey, I want you to do clustering, um, open up or listen on port 6222. And of course, we'll do the same configuration to add a service. Basically say, hey, um, open your cluster port, okay? Now, that is not enough. We have to tell them which servers to connect to. So this connection, the blue ones, that goes between NAT server, that is called a route. It's basically how you tell a NAT server how to connect to another NAT server. Now, there's something called a seed server. So just think of it as a server that bootstrap or starts the cluster up, right? It's a way to get your cluster, NAT cluster initiated. So we're going to say that NAT server one is our seed server, which means when we want to create a, um, a cluster, our second NAT server will say, oh, I have a route to the seed server. And our third cluster will also use the seed, um, NAT server one as the seed server. And so in this configuration, by NAT server 2 and NAT server 3 connecting to NAT server 1 as, this, as the seed, they're actually going to gossip and learn about each other. Now, this is far beyond the scope of what we want to do, but just know that once we bring up the cluster like this, uh, when NAT server 2 connects to NAT server 1, well, NAT server 1 now knows about NAT server 2, and of course, NAT server 2 knows about NAT server 1. But when NAT server 3 connects, it's going to learn about NAT server 2, even though we didn't explicitly told it because the servers are going to gossip, right? So essentially, NAT server we're going to say to 2, to NAT server 3, hey, by the way, there's a NAT server 2, okay? All that aside, the important takeaway here is that we need a seed server. Now, in um, the next video, I'll show you how you can do like uh, multiple seed servers. The only thing we need to do is take away that there's a seed server, when, at least one seed server when you create an NAT cluster, and this is how we're going to do things today. All right, so let's jump to the command line and sort of play around with this. Now, before I jump into that, I remember we were talking about accounts um, and how accounts are used to isolate users and the uh, subjects and, you know, object store and all this other stuff. Another thing that NAT uses accounts for is for system events. So think of these system events as events that tell you when a um, client subscribe uh, connects to NAT, when a client disconnects, when a server connects, like when you have one server joining a cluster or something, 
when there's a client authentication error, we're not going to talk about leaf nodes, but all that stuff, right? The stats about the server, all that information is um, what is captured within under the system account. Now, by default, the system account has this name dollar sign syst. And so if we want to be able to connect to NATS to see all this information, system information, we have to have a system account and you we can have users within a system account remember a system account is just like any other account it's just a special account so that's the first thing to note so we'll need to create a system account and use that system account for the NAS servers to be able to talk to each other all right because they're going to need all this information when you know some one disconnect or one connect and so on the other thing that we need to know is your clustering url when you set up a NAS cluster you have to set up a cluster URL, which is basically the route that I mentioned. And so we can see here that from the command line, if we set up our seed server as the first one that says listening to port 4222, that's just the client port. But for clustering, we're going to say, oh, I want you to listen to 4248 as that clustering port. Now, the second server, and that server that we bring up, we want it to listen on a completely different port for client connection because let's say we run it on the same machine. We can still tell it that, oh, by the way, when you um, bring up, open up your cluster port, it should be 5248. But remember, it needs a route. It needs to be able to connect to a seed server. And so now we're telling that the route here is the seed server. Now notice this property is called um, route. So you could specify more than one um, seed server here, but in this case, we're just using one. Uh, and finally, here is server C or the third server. And again, its client port is 6222 because we're running, let's say, on the same machine. And what we're going to use is, you know, it's going to expose a different cluster port, but its route is still to our first server or seed server. Now that's all you can do from the command line. And of course, further in the documentation, how you can set it up in the configuration file. Um, this video is going to be very long, so let's jump to our command line and start doing this. So first of all, what I'm going to do is here I am in episode 17 directory, and let's look at my context. And so you can see, I also have a local contents and this other context called NAT. Um, but what I'll do is let's go to our VS Code editor, or editor. And you'll see what I've done is I've copied our NAT configuration from before and I've called it server um, one, two, and three. And what did I put in one, two, and three? Well, I said, I'm just gonna listen on all available interfaces on this machine on port 222. And so again, that's a default port, but I'm making it explicit. And this server, this NAT server, I'm going to call it NAT server one. By default, NATS give each server some random name, but I want to give it a nice friendly name, so I'm going to call it NAT server one. For Jetstream, because I'm going to be running multiple NAT server on the same computer, I want to make sure that they're not using the same directory. So I say for Jetstream, the storage directory is going to be called slash temp slash NATS one. I still have the same team A and HR account with its respective users. The only new thing is this system account, which is dollar sign sys is the account name, and then it has some users. Right now, I'm the, I only have one user with the rather um, simple username admin and very secure password of password. Okay. Now further down we'll see this clustering section. So all of this so far, without this, all I have is a regular NAT server that happens to have a system account. Now, here is where we actually get into the clustering and stuff. So for the cluster, I'm saying the name of the cluster is my cluster. And the cluster port, the port on which it listens to for clustering, is for this server one, well, it's 6222. Now remember what I said. It, NAT server needs to connect to a seed server. Well, you, it's going to look strange here that the route that I'm putting in for this um, NAT server is back to itself, right? I'm, I'm saying connect on essentially the same local host 
um, back to port 2222, which is this. And that is because when we configure Jetstream, Jetstream is a service within NAS. When it comes up, it's going to say, oh, I want to connect to a server. And this server has clustering, but it's not going to see a route. So for that reason, I put this here. Don't worry about it. Just do it and don't worry. Just, just follow. Okay. Now, what does my NAT Server 2 configuration look like? Very similar to NAT Server 1 configuration. And as a matter of fact, I'll show you this by selecting uh, 1 and 2 and then say Compare Selected. And if you compare selected, you'll see that the only difference is I'm using a different port. That's because, and that's the client port, because I'm running on the same machine. And of course, I give the different name, you know, friendly name. So when we see it listed out, you'll see in a minute, or we'll see those different names. And then I want to make sure it's all, it's Jetstream is storing data in a completely separate directory. Um, and notice, again, for the port, it's cluster port, different port. And it's route, remember what I said, for a second server, we're going to use the first one as the seed. So that's why the route, how to, to, to con learn about clustering and configure clustering, it should connect to the first server that's listening on 62.22. And so there it is. And if I compare 2 to 3, you'll see the exact same thing, which is here, server 3 is listening on 42.24. It's got server 3. Again, stored in a different directory. Its port is 62.24. And the route to the seed server is you know, our first NAT server. Again, they all on the same machine. That's why I can use this. Or I can just type local host. This 127.0.0.1 means local host. So now that I have my configuration for my three servers, let's start them up. So I'll go here and I'll say NAT, that server, and then I'll start that guy up. Now, one of the things I can do is let's go create a context for this service. And I'm going to use the system context. So we're going to do NAT context. Oh, and let's list. Oh, there we go. Nothing new. And so I'll do save and then let's call it local cluster and I'll do select on it. Of course, authorization field because you know that has an empty username and password. So we'll just go edit it. And now it's going to be trying to connect locally. And it's going to connect to 4222. That's fine. That's client connection. The user I want to use is a system user, which was admin and the password was password. And so I save this. And now I can see NATS server. And if I list, you can see I can see information about the server. I can list the known servers. I could ping the servers and so on. So let me just zoom out here and let's clean up and then do NATS server and let's do ls list the server and you can see the server name is nats1 it's in the cluster my cluster um, this is host zero um, the version jetstream is enabled connection this was the only connection at the time um, subscription um, and cpu usage and all this other stuff how long it's been up and so on and then this is a cluster overview right node count and so on of course the cluster only have one node all right um, so if we do info, and you can see um, for info, it tells us the name of this server is NAS1. This is ID. Same, some of the same information that we saw in the list above. Let's zoom back out. And what I'm going to do is watch this information. So let's do this. OK, so now we can see when we have new connections to this cluster. Let's just see if we can connect to this cluster as regular users and, um, you know, just like subscribe and so on, right? So let's do that. Well, because I am on the same machine where I want to use that system configuration, that system context, I can't really do it here. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to do Docker pull and I'm going to say NATS IO slash NATS that box. And this is a Docker image that allows you to have um, within it all the NATS tool, the NATS tool. So it makes it very easy for you to have NATS tool if you don't want to install it. 
So I'm going to say docker run and I'm going to do minus minus rm, which means clean up this docs box after I'm finished, minus interactive, and then that's IO nuts box. If you remember what we did for the docker, please go back and check out that video. So I'm going to run this. And so I have a dust box there. Now, this is an Alpine Linux installation. So I can do cat etc and, and say OS release. And you're going to see it says Alpine Linux. Alpine Linux is very slim down Linux, uh, Linux and it's um, the command for in, installing additional packages. Like, for example, um, VI, Vim is not there, um, though VI is there. Um, but I like, you know, syntax I like, and so I'm going to do APK, I'm going to do update, and then I'm going to start up another NAS box over here. So I'm saying um, Docker, and then I'll do the same thing here. And then, now this is updated, I want to install NeoVim. So I'm going to say APK, add NeoVim. And that's going to install it there, and I'll do the same thing, APK, add neo vim you don't have to do all this vi is perfectly fine for just like syntax highlighting so that's why i'm doing neo vim and now um if i do not context here i do ls there shouldn't be any context because this is a completely different environment and no context was created so i want to create a context that connects to my cluster at this point um, only one server by the way but connects to the cluster anyway and let's say we connect as user A in one of these windows and then user B. But remember, A and B are in the same account. So they should be able to um, send messages and everything to each other. So I'll do that. So I'll say NAS context and we'll say save and we'll say user A. And of course, that's going to happen. And then if we try to edit, oh, I should say select. Select it and then let's edit. And OK. It says editor, so I'm going to say editor equals nvim. And then if I run this way, they see the syntax I like, and that's what I like. So where is my server? Now, this is running on my, even though I'm inside of a container, I can't say local host because I don't have NAS running inside this container. So I need the host name or IP address of my actual computer. So I can do ifconfig and then, um, if I do this, it's going to list all the interfaces and their IP addresses, but that's going to be too much. So I'm going to do grep for my network is using 10.10 as the 10.10 at 100. So I can see here is 98 as the IP address for my um, Mac here. So I'll do that. So I'll just change this to 10.10.100.98. So you have to figure this out for yourself. So now this is going to connect from within the this Docker container to my laptop to this cluster. But if you remember, for this cluster, I said to list on um, interface 0.0.0.0, .0 which means all the interfaces, and so on this port 442. So it's going to connect there. And then, of course, we want the user A, and we want password A. And so I do this. And then now I should be able to type NATS, and I should be able to do like um, stream ls and there are no streams defined but um, I should be able I still able to connect to that server and so if I do for example nats let's do publish publish and then if we publish to orders that us and I can say hello why not and so you can see I successfully published five bytes now, there wasn't anyone listening, but I can do, make sure that's the, not the case here. So let's just do the same thing here and user B, same account. And that's just so they can keep catch with each other. And same thing if I do not, let's do subscribe. And this time I'll do orders that, you know, anything essentially. And um, command line. So if I go back here and I publish, you can see, yes, I was able to publish it hello. And I can publish a couple of messages. So I can say minus minus count equals to minus one, and then minus minus sleep. And then I'll do a message every five, um, half a second. And so um, we can see that our disk is receiving all those messages. Okay, so great. So now we have connection. We have this one, we have three connections total because this one that's listing the server info, and then these two connections. So those are great. Well, let's continue and start up another cluster. 
So we'll do NAT and then we'll start our second cluster. Remember, our cluster one is a seed server, meaning that it exposes the port. And when our cluster two starts up, it's going to connect to the first server. And so when we do this, now we can see our second cluster going on. Now we have what? Two hosts in our cluster. And here it is NAT server two. And we still have three connections, all three right now are on NATS um, 1. That's because all of our configuration so far has listed this NATS 1 server by using port 442, if you remember that, right? And so these servers are running on, on my actual Mac, but within Docker containers, I'm able to still publish and subscribe. So what is the benefit? Remember I said that so if you have a cluster, you can tolerate failure. I also mentioned there was gossiping that was going on, right? We'll see when we bring up our third server here. So let's do this and we'll do that. Bring up our third server. And so once again, you can see this is join the cluster now. Now, what does this mean for our clients? Our clients, they're, they're actually sending and communicating. But what happens if we remove NAT server one? Remember, all these are configured to talk to NAT server one alone. None of them know about the port for, at least we didn't tell them. But look at this. We kill our um, seed server, but what's happening here? Our clients are still communicating. How is this possible? Well, they learned through gossiping that how there were other servers, and so they just turn around and connect to those. How do we know this? Well, let's go back here. And this time we'll edit our um, context. And what we'll do is we'll say, if you can connect to a server on port 442, connect to one that's on 127, let's see, let's see that, one port 4223, right? Remember that's yet another server we have, or connect to one that's um, on 127, let's see, that's zero. Cause these are all, servers that are, are listening for client connection. So why not? So we're saying you can connect to any one of those um, servers. And so now when we go back and we listen, we'll see now that our connections are actually distributed. We didn't have to tell our clients, but some of our clients are connected to um, NATS2 and something um, um, NATS3, right? You can see the connections are bouncing around. And notice we didn't lose any data. This is the advantage of having a cluster. So what about if we were to kill our second um, cluster? The clients don't seem to be affected in the least. They're just happily communicating, establishing connection now to um, the third server. And now all the connections are in the third server because they've gossiped and learned about it. So let's just bring it back. Like, of course, if we kill our last remaining server, then everything, you know, we can't send any messages or do anything, right? So that makes sense. So let's bring back up um, our C server here, for example. And so notice how um, connection resume, how we start back sending messages. Everything is on that one server. And we could bring up back the rest of the cluster, the rest of the, ser the, rest of the other servers, and everything is back and nice and healthy. And so that is the, the benefit of um, using a cluster. So I'll end it here. Um, I think this is really impressive. Personally, I'm very impressed. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you've tried this and if you have any error, if it worked, um, didn't work for you, why it didn't work for you, and I could hopefully could try and help sort it out. Um, let me know what you think about the video. Uh, let me know what you think about NAT so far. Like we've covered a lot of things in NAT, and a lot of it, in my opinion, is a very easy to use as compared to other things that I've I've used. So. Um, definitely would like to hear your input and your experience if you've had with other technology or even this is your first time with some message and thing what do you think so far if you are not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video please consider being a subscriber if you're a returning subscriber thank you for sticking with me and for coming back really appreciate it can't thank you enough and finally before I go in terms of supporting the channel there are a number of ways in which you can support the channel as you know I make these videos, I put them up here for free, so that's always going to be the case, that doesn't change. But if you're in a position to um, 
do a donation either via PayPal, Patreon, or through a digital currency. Those are welcome also. And a new addition is that I have a Tesla referral link. And using the Tesla referral link, if you're in the market for anything Tesla related, either EV or you know solar panel or anything from Tesla, um, you can use my referral link and we both benefit by both of us getting some points. All right, take care, be safe, have a great day. Bye.